Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about Kernla. And Kernla is a kernel for the Linux environment. And it's a little bit special and we're gonna jump right into it. So, first off, I want to take a look at the basic Linux kernel made by Linus Torvalds, of course. This is his public repository here at GitLab, uh, GitHub, and here we have the Linux kernel. And if we go down a little bit here, we see that there is a lot of stars, there are a lot of watchers, there are 12,000 contributors. And it's 98.4% written in C. There is 0.9% assembly. And then you have some make files, some shells, some Python, and some Perl. Not really that uh, exciting. But the thing here is 98% C. So this is a C code base, pretty much. And they have been talking a little bit about the C language and that it's not really memory safe. I would say that the kernel is probably really memory safe because they are writing it in a very safe manner. They are very protective and are not really introducing things that could make problems. But doing that is very hard work and you need to be very particular with your coding style and how you write your code in order to not introduce these kind of issues. So there is probably issues in the Linux kernel that hasn't been found yet. And there is a lot of them being found every day because it's not a memory safe language. And they have been talking about this new Rust language, which should run pretty much as fast as C, but it's memory safe. And why is it memory safe? Well, it builds on the similar thoughts that we have in the Java kernel, that we have a garbage collector that takes care of all the memory management for us. But this garbage collector is running in compile time. So it figures out when it needs to release things and free memory in compile time. And then you have the memory safe program coming out from that process. So let's say we are talking about 10 years in the future or 20 years in the future. Perhaps we see a 10% Rust implementation of the, C of the Linux kernel because they have been talking about bringing in some Rust. Or maybe we will see a 50% Rust kernel in the future here. We, we don't really know, but it's a very compelling thought. And somebody out there, Nuta, a was thinking the same thing. Rust is funny. Rust is interesting. Let's run and try to build a Linux kernel in Rust. So Nuta here, it's uh, Shayan Nuta from Tokyo. He sat down and wrote this Linux kernel in Rust. It's 93% Rust, 2.8% uh, in assembly. And I guess that's just because some parts need to be assembly talking to the hardware and because this kernel is much smaller it's more assembly of course and then you have some python and make files and so on but these are pretty much build scripts i believe so main code is in rust and they have some instruction here how to run it you can run it in a docker environment you can actually just SSH into a demo environment and try it out there if you like. And you can uh, run a Hello World program inside of this um, environment and so on. But there is a way that you can build the kernel and then just run it uh, with make run. And that's what I have done here. So if we switch over to, let's see here, my... SSH prompt here, you can see that I have a busy box and this is pretty much this kernel kernel. If we try to run ls, we get a bunch of errors. But remember, this is 0.1. So everything is not implemented. I'm running this in a virtual box, which could introduce a lot of issues. So let's go into the etc directory here. And here we see that we have host name, we have a profile banner and so on. 
So let's look at the banner. And this banner says, rewrite rot uh, rewrite in Rust all the things. So that's a pretty fun banner. Uh, let's see here what we have me more. We have a host name here. What could that be? The host name uh, is empty. Um, I thought that they had also this version file somewhere. Uh, there is some integration tests. Uh, if we look into the var directory, and then we have a vvv directory. So there's a, a homepage here, an html directory, and here we have an index.html. So I guess that you can go to some kind of a web server if you get that working and say it works on kernel. So that is something that I am building for. So this is of course very early in production or very early in development. Most of the things are not implemented yet, but there is a proof of concept running in the cloud and there is a lot of code already written to handle all the basic commands. If we go into the bin directory here, we can see that we have some uh, curl, we have some drop key, we have grep, we have pvd. So let's see here if we can curl and uh, let's see Daniel person dev. Let's see if if that is a possibility. And uh, it seems that it ran something. Um, curl HTTPS Daniel person dev. See if it does something. Yeah, it hang up. Uh, HTTPS is not supported. Curl HTTP Daniel person .dev. Oh, Yeah, I got something here. It's moved permanently to the HTTPS so I can actually curl my own web server here, which is fun. Um, and yeah, so we have dmesk. Let's see if we get any information here. There is so much other debug information, but you see here we got some IP address here uh, on 10.0.2.15 and the MAC address and so on. And we could probably go to that address. I don't know if we get the web server or not. But the important part here is just that they are doing something, they are implementing something, and they wrote on the page that this is not something that is going to be the mainstream Linux kernel, of course. This is a proof of concept that might build into something that could be used in very specific use cases. So you have this alternative Linux, Al Alpine Linux, where you have replaced the glibc with a much lighter version in order to have much smaller Docker images when we are running stuff in the cloud. And this could be something similar. This could be something that is very small, very efficient in your Docker cloud. This could be something that is implemented for very specific hardware that you are running in some uh, uh, production environment or something like that where memory safety is very important. So this is a very interesting project and a very fun way going forward. I'm not sure if they actually have uh, um, mapped out what they want it to be or if it's just a, a passion project. It seems like a passion project at the moment at least. Um, but I think this is very exciting. What do you think about having Linux, uh, having Rust code in the Linux kernel? Do you think that is important? Do you think that is interesting? Or do you feel that, yeah, they write a pretty good kernel as is, why, not, why introduce another complexity into it? They should not do that. Leave me a comment in the comment section down below what you think about this thoughts and changes going forward. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And I really hope to see you in the next video.